Let the Eurovision Song Contest begin! Welcome to the third installment of Belgium Week on the Woo-hoo! Do's Club podcast. Hi, Liz. Belgium fever. <laughs> What's new with you? Well, um, I think basically, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just good that, you know, I'm sick of everything being about the coronavirus. I want to I wanna make it all about Belgium fever. Yes, Queen. I think we've all got a little Belgium fever. Twice as catchy. Twice as infectious. So last week, we well, uh-huh. on Monday, we finished up doing uh, up to 1986, uh-huh. which was Belgium's first win yes. at the contest. We are picking up from 1987. And dare I say, it was not the best time for Belgium, the late 80s into the early 90s. Oh, look, it could have been worse, you know? <laughs> That's um, true. Let's go with that. It could have been worse. It has been worse. It could have been yeah. worse. It has been worse before. It will be yeah. worse again. <laughs> 1987 was Lillianne St. Pierre with Soldiers of Love, and it finished 11th. Where do you start with this one? Uh, well, I think clearly where you have to start is with her two backup dancers slash guitar players who were <laughs> yeah. uh, – Proceed to start firing their guitars like guns right. across so the stage. One, this song was a, a plea for peace around the world, and it was mm. peak 1980s as far as mm. I was concerned. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing, you know, says a cry for peace like using your guitar like a weapon. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it screams peace in its violence. It screams! <laughs> Um, yeah, no, the guitarists are really digging it in this one. I like her. I really actually, I thought the performance was yeah. like, you're working with what God's given you for this song. You know, you've, you've taken Which all the parts you lot. can and you've, yeah, you're really throwing it against the wall. So I've got to give points for that. Are you, I say about the dress, I desperately like love her outfit. I desperately mm-hmm. want it. It's kind of, it's soldier uniform meets um, you know, in the saloons, those kind of, you know, the ya ya yes, girls, yes. you know, with the do, 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 can can girls. It's that meets a u- military uniform, but in black. A it's bit kind of, Darth of Vader. like Elvira, the Empress of Darkness, or whatever yes. she was. There would like, be a lot I more titties really if it. it was Elvira. Oh, a yeah. It was, like, it was like PG Elvira. Yes. Yes. Like, like pre prime time no prime time elvira before the watershed yeah. and where you can show whatever the yeah. hell you want yeah i really like this one to uh, to quote the legendary um elvira i love pg movies as long as there's lots of sex and violence <laughs> oh i miss her is she alive oh yeah i i like i follow her like a stalker on like all oh, so the she's, social so she's mediums. alive elvira is alive it's a pandemic this is her time to thrive are you kidding (laughs) all right well for this one yeah like like you said i love the guitar guns if you haven't seen this one look it up 1987 uh the guitarists are having a great time they're taking the most they possibly can uh, with what they've been given uh song i've only given a five but performance an eight and the fashion a seven for a total of 20 Oh, I g- yeah, I gave uh, song and performance uh, a five. I gave fashion a seven. The, uh, that would equal 17, five plus five plus seven for a total of 37. <laughs> Woohoo! Shut up. Okay, 1988 was Ray Nett with the song Laze Brille du Soleil, which finished 18th. This song, can I say I love it because this song, it translates to... Let the sun shine. Let the sun shine. <laughs> it I does enjoy that song. It, it, that, that it's not quite the same song, but yes, it is. <laughs> it does translate to "Let the sun shine onto the less fortunate." Now, this one's like a late '80s kind of synthy ballad. Is that what you'd call it? 
Yeah, it's it's like uh, I'm torn between this song because I really like the message of what they're trying to say in that, you know, yes, you should let the light shine um, on those who are less fortunate. Unfortunately, I don't think the thing that Reynard realizes is that he is the less fortunate with yeah. this poor, <laughs> poor performance. Oh my God, for a start, they're wearing leather suits. Okay, so I was watching this with Jamie and I turned to him and I went, I need you to look up from Animal Crossing. Tell me if that suit is made of leather. And he looked at it and he went, I can't think of anything else that would be made of. It must be made of leather. So I'm glad you're on the same page. He's wearing a leather suit. It's hideous. It's, oh my, that is literally what I've written. Are they wearing leather suits? Question mark, question mark. Hideous! Multiple exclamation points. Okay, it's I'm, so I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah, it's, I didn't mind I, her dress. Did you see her dress in the background? Yeah, no, I don't. I just, I kept, I kept looking at their outfits and I just kept thinking what a terrible waste of cows. Those cows died <laughs> horribly to make horrible outfits for a horrible song. Yeah, it's nothing but a tragedy. There was, it was a bit kind of like, there was like a yodeling kind of vibe at the, or did I just like go, oh, it's Eurovision. That must be yodeling. It might've just been regular singing. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's zoned out. Um, yeah. All I could find out about Reynard is that he is coming currently a director of the Centre Cultural de Somal. Oh, that sounds fancy. Yeah, Probably it doesn't, doesn't it look it, fancy it, I know, it sounds really fancy. I think it's a community centre, what we would call yeah. a community, <laughs> where, like, you move the chairs and tables away to play ping pong. Not that there's yeah. anything wrong with that. <laughs> oh, um, if it works for you. At least he's yeah, got look, a paycheck coming in, so he can buy more. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm I'm surprised that he found a gig. Um, yeah. this. <laughs> no, I'm a I'm a different Reynard. I'm not the one from Eurovision. <laughs> I promise <laughs> you. Um, yeah, look, this one falls flat for me. Song three, performance one, fashion one, for a total of five. Oh, I I actually gave this song a four because I kind of liked the the messaging of what they were going for. Um, I gave the performance a two, and I'm just going to say it, fashion gets a zero. That wow. thing was hideous. And not only that, like with all those studio lights, can you imagine how sweaty? Yeah. Oh, he's probably cooked. Like literally, he'll be well done by the end of the performance. Yeah, like it was horrendous. I think when he took that thing off, like people passed out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 1989, it's Ingeborg with Du de Wind, Through the Wind, which finished 19th. Can I just start by saying this woman needs to get an iron? Oh, oh my God. What? Oh, okay. Oh, for everyone listening, it is hideous. It is like the worst like really conservative mother of the bride outfit that hasn't been ironed in like a pale salmon it's horrendous it's, it's horrendous. still though it's still not the ugliest outfit belgium have sent for this episode and we will get to that later but yeah this <laughs> it's uh, it's i wrote get an iron you creasy witch i don't know why i called her a witch but then that guy shows up in the background and he is also very creasy. Yeah, it's just, there's just, I mean, and she just stands there. I mean, maybe she's startled by the creepy man behind her. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> um, all I can tell you is after after she uh, released this song in 89, she went on the following year in 1990 to host Belgium's Blind date ah um, oh no that's nice she had a career afterwards well though she did that and then she spent the next 16 years um working on a children's program um in in belgium so again well done on getting a job you wouldn't think after this yeah would have been you know belgium's noni hazelhurst uh this one's forgettable as heck for me i just oh, really yeah. didn't remember it after it was over i don't remember it now i'm upset yeah. that belgium was in a starch rationing at the time uh but that's hopefully they resolve <laughs> it by 1990 well their suffering never end never end i've given the song a three performance a one and fashion a very generous one for a total of five Oh, well, see, I just went song one, performance one, fashion zero, 
run an iron Brit- across it. Totally true. Run wow. And iron. All right. 1990 was Philippe La Fontaine with Macedonian, my Macedonian girl, which finished in 12th. Okay. So this song was dedicated to his wife. Um, who obviously was Macedonian. Um, all I could think is, <laughs> listening to this song, is hopefully his wife is more interesting than the song. <laughs> this song. And like, I mean, for parts of the song, it's like he just stands there and hums to himself. It's like, yeah. I, I, I don't even know how this song got selected. Yeah, I, I think everyone else went on vacation and Philippe was the only person left in Belgium. And they were like, can you write a song? Yeah. And he was like, I don't know, but I'll give it a shot. (laughs) Turns out he can't. It's so bizarre. And it's like sometimes, you know, with a song, you can be like, okay, they've clearly, you know, picked that song because, you know, they're marketing it to teenagers or, you know, they're marketing it to um, single women or they're marketing to the gay community. I can't believe the community of men married to Macedonian women is that high (laughs) that they went, quick, we have to snag the market. (laughs) Yeah. Um, look, there's not much to say about this one either. He's wearing that. It's a burnt orange jacket. <sighs> I I was a little bit confused. Kind of. That feels like a yeah. color I wish I could wear, but I never would wear. Does yeah. that make sense? Because yeah. you have taste, ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, this performance was pretty stoic as well. He doesn't move, and I know that's a massive turn off for you. So, uh I, I think it's a turn off it. for anyone. Like nobody, ex- <laughs> nobody likes people to just stand there except um, necrophiliacs. Nobody else is into people just, <laughs> you know, oh, lifeless. God. You get me in trouble every week on this show. I swear <laughs> to God, you, what? you. This would be a ten-minute edit job if I didn't have to crop you out like eighty-seven percent. I'm of not time. encouraging it. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying maybe that's maybe that's just... the market they're appealing to. Maybe. Dead people don't vote, though. No, no, no. But the people who make love to the dead people. Oh, okay. It's a yeah. pro-necrophilia anthem. Yeah. Although they, uh, they're probably in prison, so no vote. Yeah. Oh, no. Can you vo- Actually, that's a good question. If I'm in prison, can I still vote at Eurovision? Can prisoners... At Eurovision? I think yeah. absolutely you can vote at Eurovision. Okay. Oh, maybe... Oh, no. I'm thinking of, like, uh, like general elections. Like parliament elections. <laughs> yeah. Other than, you know, appealing to the convicted but can vote at Eurovision necrophilic audience. Mm. Um, I didn't, and I'm not entirely sure I endorse that train of thought, but we'll roll with it for now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like this one is, I don't hate it fully. I like it more than some of the previous ones they'd sent. Um, I've given the song a four, performance a two, fashion a three, because I'm bloody generous for a total of nine. Yeah, I was just a cold-hearted bitch this week. Um, I gave the song a two, the performance a one. Uh, I gave the fashion one. It wasn't a leather suit, so I gave him a point, just <laughs> not for wearing a leather suit. For a total of 13 from the two of us. 1991, Clouseau with Gif Het Up. Which sounds like give it up, but if you've just had dental surgery, right? Give it up. Which uh, doesn't actually translate to give it up. Give it up. Was uh, this song English. as well also directed at all the necrophiliacs in prison? Oh my God. <laughs> give it up. Just give it up. See, that's counterbalance to the argument. See? Our listens in Belgian prisons are about to go through the roof. I'm telling you. <laughs> These people speak to us. Uh, this one finished 16th in the end. The woman he loves should leave her man and be with him is the message of this song. Yeah. Actually, how many times have we heard this from Belgium? Like, leave your shit man and, like, yeah. run off with and me. And jump instead. in the river with me. <laughs> no, it's just, this seems to be a reoccurring theme, you know, in Belgium. Mm. You know what? Actually, I'm going to look up what is the average length of a marriage in Belgium. I'm going to look that up next week. It All doesn't right. seem well, to be long. Write it down so you don't forget. Are you writing okay. it down? Yes. Are you writing it down? I want you to write yes. it down in three languages. <laughs> Done. English, French, yes. and Dutch. <laughs> oh, what about Klingon? And Klingon. Okay. 
Much like Clouseau, who are clinging on to a girl who don't want none. <laughs> Can I say, oh, like, looking at this performance, from a distance, the lead singer, he looks like the Belgium Eric Roberts. You may yes. not know who oh Eric Roberts is. Oh, my Ro God. Yes. No, I know who Ro Eric Roberts is. Yeah, uh, Julia Roberts' uh, sister. He No, yes. he's, he's Julia Roberts' brother. I, I, I'm with you now. I'm with you yes. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, I liked his um, I liked his fancy footwork. He didn't do much, and like I said, this is a this is a thing we always mark people down for when we're doing this. Is do you oh, dance enough? He he look he he tried. He was you know he was doing some like jumping he was a around. little bit hammed in by the um by just the stage and how he was performing with the mic stand and stuff. Yeah, it's actually I've got to say I had to I had to sort of stop this song for part and then go back and listen to it because I swear it just sounded like um <laughs> shave it off Baxter. And I was like, who is Baxter? What is he shaving off? <laughs> the best thing is when I looked in the comments, I was not the only one. There were, there were other people as well going, shave it off, Baxter. <laughs> so I don't know who Baxter is or if that's like code but he's for something. getting bonus points for it, right? <laughs> well, it depends what it is. If anyone in Belgium can tell us what a Baxter is. Yeah. Um, you know what? Baxter shaved it all off and Europe still didn't vote for them. That is unfair. After all, Baxter's <laughs> hard fucking work. I know. What more does a Baxter have to do? Seriously. Exactly. So this was a nice change of pace, but it wasn't much for me. I've given the song a four, performance a four, and the fashion a three for a total of 11. Oh, I was a little bit more um, generous. I think I might have just had a snack. So I gave them a five across the board. <laughs> for a total of 15. There's some yeah. math I can do. <laughs> Woohoo! Not just a pretty face. Damn right. Although I do lean on that a little too much. 1992. <laughs> it's Morgan with Nous Om Vut de Violence. We want violins. And it finished 20th. Yeah. It turns out Europe did not want violins. They would not want <sighs> violins until Alexander Ryback some yeah. few decades later. Wait 17 years, Morgan. And yeah, look, this one is a train wreck to me. I absolutely oh. do not care. The awful dancing. It's a weird song. It jumps all over the place. Yeah. The violins, the little violin solos are the only bit I can forgive in this song. Yeah. The rest is an absolute write-off. Yeah. It's just... And, that, and not only that, it's like... She's, I swear, she is in her rehearsal clothes. Mm -hmm. And not only is she in her rehearsal clothes, I swear she is wearing slip-on boating shoes. Like, I do realise that the stage that year was of the Viking um, ship in the background. The Viking longboat, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, th that does not mean boating shoes are appropriate for the main stage of the Eurovision <laughs> Song Contest. Like, yeah, I... oh... My lord. Like, I actually prefer, like, go, go barefoot. I would rather she went barefoot than come out mm -hmm. in boating shoes. Like, $5 bathing shoes from Kmart. Outraged. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan of this one either. I really can't. I, I don't, I don't understand how someone says dance like a human and she does it so completely wrong. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like she looks like um, like she looks like a seal has come to shore and tried to impersonate a human moving around, and it's like not convincing. <laughs> like this is one of the harshest criticisms I've ever had of of a song on this show. I yeah. Oh, this is a train wreck, and not in the glittery gay kind of Sylvia Knight way. This is a legitimate train wreck. Like yeah, I, it is no. horrendous. Um, so what you what you give it score wise? I gave the song a one because I like the violins. The uh -huh. performance I've given a zero. Now, I know you and I say, hey, if you're at Eurovision, move a little bit. Nope, not this case. Stop moving. <laughs> Never move again. Right? Literally. I've given the performance a zero and the fashion a minus one for oh! a total of zero. Excellent. No, I get that. I, I gave the song a one again, like the violins. Um, I gave the performance uh, a one. Again, at least she did move. She looked like she was dying, but at least she was moving. <laughs> um, and fashion. Yeah, you wear boat shoes, you wear a zero. Oh, for a total of two. That might be the lowest collective score we've ever given out. Yeah, but I still feel we have been extremely too generous to this performance. Yeah, I know. 
Anyway, yeah. let's move on and pretend it never happened. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this one. Oh. 1993. And it's Barbara Dex with the song Imand Als Jage, I think. Someone Like You, which finished last. Now, eh. the first eh. thing I have to say about this is eh. that Barbara Dex is the namesake for Eurovision's Worst Dressed Award, which is handed out every year <laughs> since 1997. And can I just say, completely on board with that. Yeah. The, uh, well, see, I'm not, I am not always on board for who they have voted as the winner. Um, yes. Cause like, could I say some of the winners, it's like, are, are you insane? Um, oh my, like one of the years they gave it to Verka. Like, how dare you? How dare Did they really you? give it to Verka? They gave it to Verka. I know. Oh. I was like, I will burn this shit to the ground. But Injustice. <laughs> from 1993. Okay, the other thing, we, we should explain to people who haven't seen this. And again, I will put this up on uh, Facebook. Everybody, the really choice um, film clips, we do uh, put them on uh, Facebook. She made this outfit herself. Okay? She did. She she made it. I she might have been influenced by Satan, who has led her astray. <laughs> and I can't <laughs> even. Oh my god! And I don't, she's barefoot as well. And it's yep. I can't even like have words to just, to describe it. The it's the style, the fit, the color, horrific. Like I look at this outfit. And I want to call Law and Order SVU. <laughs> it is that bad. Fashion has been murdered. Oh, Dun -dun. absolutely. So, like, and this is this is one of those uh, outfits that fully transcends the song. Like this, yeah. this whole review is yeah. not about the song. The song is passable. It's whatever. If you watch this video, it's all about this dress. And yeah. it's, oh, so it's, I've written down that she looks like she's wearing an unwashed sheer tablecloth. Yeah. But that would have been better. Somehow she has made an unwashed yeah, exactly. sheer tablecloth worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, just because you put a collar on it doesn't make it yeah, exactly. fashionable. So it's got this un uneven collar. It's a full... <gasps> Full arms, full body dress, no shoes, yeah. sheer, this off kind of greeny yellow kind of colour yeah. with like like a like athletic wear underneath it. You will yeah. never forget this one if you see it. Yeah. It it will haunt your dreams. Hundred like, percent. It just yeah, like if if you if you die and you go to hell, okay, you will spend like an eternity being like surrounded by her in this dress, just like <laughs> flapping you in the face with it, just like flap, 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 flap. Ah, make it stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. So bad. Belgium have sent worse songs that didn't finish last, but because mm. of this whole performance, oh, this, this was a worthy last place, I think. So I've given the song a yeah. four, performance a three, Fashion a hard cold zero for a total oh, of seven. You are more generous than me. I gave the song a one, the performance a one, and I gave fashion minus ten. <laughs> Only because you told you told me to stop giving out minus thousands. <laughs> no one will ever get less points than that Andorran entry. <laughs> I do not support that Andorran message. If I can do my math right, and we all yeah. know I can't. Yeah, uh, I believe we have culminatively given it a minus one. I I know I th I think that's the best description I of that song fair. ever. Now in 1994, based on the terrible performance of Barbara Dex, Belgium for the first time ever was not at Eurovision 1994. They were yeah. relegated and had to wait out one year. They'd been to every contest. I hate that. Yeah. I feel like if you'd been to every contest, you should be allowed to go to every contest. Until you bring an unwashed it. vinyl velour table That's cloth. right. <laughs> then all bets are off. No. Yeah, look, Sit okay, maybe Belgium. Maybe they deserved it for Barbara Dex. Maybe. Yeah. Um, can I just say... I, I am 100% behind Eurovision. Eurovision was right to put Belgium in the corner after that, <laughs> after that outfit. 
Well, they did come back strong in 1995. Strong might be an overstatement, but they did come back in 1995. Frederick Etherlink with the song La Voix Est Libre. The voice is free. And they finished 20th. Now, this guy is a poor man's, a very poor man's Tom Lieb. Ah, oh, don't you insult Tom Lieb that way. Like, this, no. is, this is like... No. This is like poverty, Tom Lieb. No, no, no! Oh my lord, Tom Lieb could be dead in a sack for a month, and then buried under the Eiffel Tower, and then I would <laughs> dig him up, and I would still give Tom Lieb a leg over before I'd give this guy a leg over. Liz, no. stop bringing up necrophilia tonight, <laughs> would you please? <laughs> I just want everyone out there listening to know. We literally converse about none of this before the show. Like, we figure out which years we're watching. We watch them separately. We don't discuss what we're going to talk about, about each song. This is all natural. We did not script Liz being obsessed well, with I'm, necrophilia. I'm not sure we could describe necrophilia as natural. No, I'm not saying it's my preferred option. Like, I would prefer to, like, throw a leg over Tom Lee while he was living. Like, I want that very much on the record. You know, especially if Tom Lieb is listening, and obviously he would be, bonjour. That wasn't me. That was my lady parts. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Can we get back to the song, please? Pretty please, with sugar on top. Uh, if the song isn't 1995 Frederick Etherlinux, yes, we can get back to it. So <laughs> that song is shit. It's so yeah, it shit. sounds like it sounds like a song REM rejected like fifty times, yeah. and someone just kept bringing it back worse and worse each time. It's and REM so were like. Get out of our building. Yeah, no, yeah. this one sucks. Oh, my God. For a st oh, my God. Can I also say, oh, my God. Like, the lead singer is wearing two oversized shirts. One yes. is like an oversized work shirt over a denim shirt. Um, two of, like, and there's, like, a guitar guy wearing, like, um, the Outback, like, raincoats that we wear, like, while we're, like, herding horses um, yes. in the Outback. <laughs> and the other thing that I do not understand is the keyboard player, okay, is also holding a guitar and the keyboard player is playing a guitar and never actually plays the keyboard. Oh, Why I do you have a keyboard? <laughs> yes, he's standing behind a keyboard but playing a guitar. Why is the keyboard oh there? Oh, my God. Pick Look, one. The <laughs> I think they were the opposite of the Barbara Dex thing where they went, okay, she overdressed and it was horrific. Just wear your street clothes. Rule yeah. number two, rule number yeah. one, don't bring up the war. Rule yeah. number two, yeah, don't wear your street clothes to Eurovision. Get dressed yeah. for Eurovision. Thank you. I got the song of two, performance two, fashion zero. You wear the denim. I mean, a bit more generous than you. Song three, performance three, fashion two. Because compared to Barbara Dex, it wasn't the worst thing I'd seen all week. <laughs> oh, my God. 1996 was Lisa Dubow with the song Lifta is ein Kartspiel. Love is a card game. And it finished 16th. Yeah. Uh... Now, the most notable <laughs> thing about this song is that it was involved in a plagiarism suit. I don't know if you read up on this one. Uh... It was involved in a plagiarism suit against yeah. Sweden's entry in 2001 yeah. uh, because they both kind of sound like da 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 do da da do da do They both have that tune pretty much. Really? The songwriters got sued. The country didn't, but the songwriters did, yes. Oh my, but it's, and it's like, but it's bizarre. Like if you're going to like lift a couple of like tunes, why would you lift it from this song? The song is through shit. I know, right? It's like, oh, I kind of, I feel like I want to love this song more than I, than I do, like more than I can. I'm like, this is upbeat. This is jazzy. This is fun. Why don't I like this song? <laughs> you know? It's, uh, what can I say like with this, this, uh, this song for me is all about the outfit. Um, yes. It's, it's all about the outfit. It's like a dinner jacket, but the dinner jacket is made out of blouse material and but the shirt jacket has a tutu sewn onto it, but that's the jacket oh, yes. over the and skirt. And how good are those ruffles? <laughs> yeah. Mind you, my her three black um, her um, backup singers are just are just dressed in the most plain 
black. Like, yeah. it's yeah, it's just like the most hideous outfits. Like, <laughs> just so, like, they were just, I don't know, like, get serving wine at the bar. Like, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not a not a fan. I, look, I, I love the dress. If you haven't heard it, listen to this one. Liefde is in Kartspel from Belgium 96 then listen to listen to your heartbeat Sweden 2001 you mm -hmm. will hear a quite similar tune going on there but I've given the song a six performance a four fashion a seven for a total of 17. Oh yeah we're on different pages I gave song a two performance two fashion a four. Ooh, for a total of eight. Yeah I'm not, I'm not getting behind that one. Well, Europe didn't like that song any more than you did because after finishing mm -hmm. 16th, Belgium was relegated in 1997 and didn't appear again until 1998 with Melanie Cole and the song Do We Say Yes, which finished 6th. And can I say this time it is the woman telling the man to leave their jerk of a, of a woman. Yay! Feminism! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, this one's, this is a sweet little song. I think she's dressed to like, to go out to like a nice business lunch. That's literally, I was like, oh, she's uh, got a, she's pitching a business plan after this. Well, it's, that's what I don't understand. It's like, I do not understand these awful beige sand color outfits that Belgium like keeps wearing. Like, it's like, yeah. Belgium back in the day accidentally like filled out a form and ordered like 10 billion meters of this material, which has just filled up 10 <laughs> warehouses in Belgium somewhere. And they are just very slowly, just whittling, you know, whittling it away, like just trying to make everything in the country out yeah. of this like <laughs> accidental. Because I don't understand. Flags made out of it. Roads made out of it, buildings made out <laughs> yeah, of it. Exactly. Bandages, like just yeah. everything. School. All the animals at the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> just, <you know. laughs> oh my God. It's wow. But uh, can I say, like, let's be honest, like, this whole performance is stolen by the bass guitarist behind her. Like, 100%. Oh my god! If she had his like even a tenth of his energy, I think this song like like it could have had a shot. It would have done so much better if she mm. had his like level of performance. Like he He's, is loving that bass guitar. He whips out some of those Daddy Freya moves from Iceland this year. But baby, <laughs> I can't. And I really love it. Look, it's one of those late 90s mellow funk pop kind of songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? That were all the rage in like 97, 98. I kind of like it. It had a bit of life to it, which, yeah, you know. Yeah, me too. Like, so, oh, the other thing is, like, we should know. And, like, the reason that she, she may have just been standing there is she was 16 at the time. Um, she was a baby. Yeah. So again, I think it's one of those things of, I think if they had someone of like an age who would maybe even, I don't know, dated somebody, let alone <laughs> dating somebody else to be telling that other person to come date the second or the first person, like, oh my God, I don't think she's even talked to a boy, um, let alone, yeah, singing a come back to me lover song. So I think that could have been where it went wrong uh look i gave the song a five the performance three and a fashion a one for a total of nine i've been yeah. a bit more generous than you song six performance five fashion six for a total of 17. yeah i just i yeah I, I, yeah i just think yeah with a different singer and better performance um this song could have done better yeah 1999 vanessa shinator with like the wind it finished 12th i actually before you start raining hate on this, I actually, I actually really like this one. It's, um, oh my God, it's like the Belgium Emma Thompson. And she is in this like f floor length scarlet red uh, shiny satiny dress with almost like uh, kimono sleeves. And the four backup dancers have these sort of black and red medieval dresses like it's sung beautifully like they've tried to put some effort you know into uh the choreography 
But you know what? You know what I think is a failure for this? As well as the lovely Emma Thompson and the gorgeous backup dancers, there is some creepy random dude in a grey suit who was right at the front with her who just awkwardly stands there for most of the song looking drugged and confused. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I I think he's playing an ocarina. Is it an ocarina? Hey, ocarina. I think it I is. I feel like ocarinas come up way too often for us on this podcast. <laughs> I, it sounds kind of like they've used green sleeves as their like, they're like, like blueprint yeah. for this song. Yeah. Um, but you think I'm going to hate it. I love this song. Oh, really? I really like it. Yeah. I love her dress. I don't hate the song. It is a bit all over the shop, but the backup singers are looking like vampires. The ocarina is just grooving between his solos. I, <laughs> I, yeah, this, this one I would write home about. I've given the song a seven fashion, a seven performance, a six for a total of 20. Oh, so yeah, I gave the I gave the song a six. I gave the performance uh, a seven. Um, I had to take I had to take a point off for the creepy guy because he was just distracting. <laughs> um, I actually gave the fashion an eight. Oh uh, wow! Again, I would have given her um, an extra point, but again, I took a point off for creepy, creepy slender man to the side, <laughs> like. <laughs> Take your ocarina and get the hell out, mate. 2000 <laughs> was Natalie Sosa with Envie d'en vivre, The Will to Live. And it finished a dismal 24th for Belgium. She's been left at the altar, but it looks like she's refused to take the dress off for three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh my God. I mean, to be honest, if like this song, you can see why this song only got two points. Like... It's, oh my God, for a start, the hideous, hideous Belgium mass-produced material is back. Yes. They, yes. you know, they've wheeled out a few a few more meters of it. Um, so she's wearing the horrible beige dress. She has five backup dancers. The three ladies are wearing horrible beige power pantsuits. <laughs> and they are met with two gentlemen uh, who... Thankfully, are wearing uh, black shirts with. Oh, gee, what are they wearing underneath? They would be hideous grey beige. Ugh, <sighs> shirts. Horrific. I feel Ugh. like her backup singers had to go to lunch with Melanie to that business luncheon she was going to later yeah. on in the day. Like she's their banker or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, like oh. this one's. This is. I don't mind the backup singers. They seem to have some kind of groove going on, but yeah. Natalie is not doing anything for me. I think she deserved relegation for this one. Song two, performance three, fashion two for a total of seven. Yeah, this is like, this is this is a beige song. It is a beige vocal performance with a dress made by Barbara Dex. Um, I give <laughs> song a one, performance zero, fashion zero. For a total of one. Yeah. As I just said, they were relegated in 2001, so they got to sit at home and watch everybody else have a good time thinking about mm. what they did. But they came back with a passion in 2002. Sergio <laughs> and the <laughs> ladies the with the ladies. song Sister that finished 13th. Now, I've written right up Liz's alley. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Sergio and the sisters. Oh, my God. It is the Belgium meatloaf. It is the only way to describe this man. Like, yeah, like the elder, like, meatloaf in his, like, sunglasses, um, like, you know, rocking out his, you know, very traditional sort of meatloafy, rocky song. But, oh my God, the highlight for this. So there's, okay, so picture this. Picture meatloaf on stage, banging. I'm like a bat out of Eurovision. Nah, 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 nah. Out of nowhere, <laughs> big man chucks a cartwheel live on stage yep. it's like a half cartwheel half yeah. front flip yeah what the when he did it i like i almost lost like part of my lunch in terror <laughs> because i'm just like oh my god it's the first death on stage like yeah i know like, it's oh crazy god. right it just and it was just from nowhere like he's a big man like you would never have predicted he would be able to like even attempt that like let alone sober um and let alone yeah. pull it off like oh my god this yeah is why i thought this was right up your alley it was cringy as hell 
and it looked like <laughs> someone's uncle's like like Guns N' Roses cover band that they do in the garage <laughs> tribute band. And I thought yeah. of you immediately. I yeah. look, I'm happy with this one. This one sparks joy this one so song four performance six mostly for the cartwheel and yeah. fashion a two for a total of 12 yeah i've got to admit like, my, my initial reaction was this was i was like i threw out like a a couple of sevens and then i was like no 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 just no come on you're just you're excited <laughs> um because from the last like just 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 calm your farm um so you'd be very proud of me i showed some restraint um Good i gave you. the song a five uh performance a six yeah it was all about the performance yeah. i give the fashion oh god zero. Oh, thank god i thought you were gonna give it a 10 oh my god there is so much denim on those backup dancers and it's that horrible sort of like phase at the beginning of the o2s where like everyone was wearing two outfits at the same time because like one of them she's got oh she's got a t-shirt and a skirt on over a pair of jeans and a jacket yep. and you're just like you nobody needs that many layers like yeah no. i was guilty of that in the early 2000s but i didn't buy my own clothes in the early 2000s so i'm off the hook What's your <laughs> buy me more clothes mother now <laughs> <laughs> buy me 2000, more. 2003 was the group urban trad with the song sanomi which finished second belgium's best performance wow. since victory yeah now this is Out a song in a completely made up tongue to quote Terry Wogan, and I, I feel the need to quote Terry Wogan here. They've got four languages yeah. in Belgium and they're singing in an imaginary one. The very essence of the Euro. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're, you know, they're, it's a made up language. There's, it's kind of like, kind of trying to, you know, give Yoiking a go, kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got, it's got that kind of vibe. The thing that I found um, interesting is you, uh, the controversy that sort of went in um, even before this even made it to the stage. Um, apparently they, uh, you know, people and some people in the government expressed concerns about their lead singer um, having some sort of off to the side um, uh, opinions. Um, and so she was pretty much removed. Um, yes. Yes. Um, uh, she came out. Was, I I think was saying, oh no no no, that was that was that was stuff that I said, you know, well before. Uh, but they were just like, yeah, now nah, just in case you're uh, yeah, completely better, cray cray. Better safe than sorry, right? <laughs> you don't want exactly. a Eurovision winner being like, by the way, we should set fire to old children and pets. That's not what she said. I don't know what she said, but I don't yeah. know. It could be pretty I, yeah, interesting. I, she did. I, I couldn't I couldn't find a link to what it, what her views were um, uh, supposedly to be, but and I was kind of thinking about this. Yeah, it was that whole thing of like you know, there's so many languages in Europe. Yeah, you know, why are you singing in this yeah. uh, uh, imaginary sort of language? And I'm like, part of me was I'm like, I couldn't decide if it was a ridiculous. Or B, if it was absolutely genius. Because the thing is, for at Eurovision, you know, there's always whatever language you speak in, there's always going to be um, people who don't understand what you're actually, you know, saying. Have to look up the lyrics or get the subtitles. But if you create an imaginary language, then, you know, not only are we all like, we're all like, I don't know what's being said. And that's kind of genius because you can make up what that song means in your mind. For exactly. every single person who hears it, you design that song in your mind and what it's about. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> conflicted about this song. I Sometimes I like it. I like that. Yeah. Hey, na na, hey, na na, do do. I like that bit. And I, I get intrigued by it because half the time I'm like, I'd never want to hear this song ever again with these weird yes, ladies who yeah. went to the op shop on the way in because they forgot to get a costuming budget. Oh, the fashion is such a fail. Right? Oh. So they, oh, oh, Jesus Christ. But other times I'm like, yeah, this is kind of groovy and I kind of like it. So I'm always conflicted about this one. Yeah. Um, I've given the song a five and the performance a five, but the fashion a three for a total of 13. Yeah, that, that, that was, you've summed up exactly how I was feeling as well. Like I sort of changed my opinion about this song 
so mm. many times. Um, but then I ended up, well, you know what? I've got to give them points just for that. So I ended up giving the song a seven. I gave the performance uh, a seven. A lot of that is for the piano accordion guy who is yeah, rocking a, it hardcore. He's a banger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I gave the fashion a zero. Awful. Oh, wow. For a total of I, 14. Yeah. Like you said, again, rehearsal clothes. Like put something yeah. on. Exactly. Like, they don't read our rules. They don't listen to us, do they? That's rude yeah. of them. 2004 was Zandi with One Life and it finished 22nd. Take advantage of life. We have only one. Beautiful. The dancers are on poppers. The drummer is on poppers. <laughs> the singer might be a drag queen. I'm not entirely sure, but this is so 2000s. It's just, it's awful. Like the supporting drummers and dancing and dancers are wearing a combination of soccer jerseys, gym shorts, mm. track pants, and sneakers while she is in a salsa dress. What the yep. hell? What the it's hell? wild, right? Yeah, like yeah. while back in 1992, Morgan was just a horrible train wreck that I don't even want to talk about. This is like a kitschy kind of train wreck. Do you know what I oh. mean? It's just, I, it's awful. It's awful. Oh, no, I love this song unironically. I would put this song on at Bob's Eurovision party after like no! 10 No! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm totally doing it next year. Strap in oh, May 2021. You're no! going to hear this song. I've given the song a six, performance a five because it, it, it's all over the shop, and the fashion a three for a total of 14. Oh, no. it's. I mean, the other thing we've got to say is this was like, it was a terrible live vocal performance. There were also oh, yes. like massive microphone problems. They couldn't, they just could not seem to get the microphone levels right um, at the beginning. Um, I mean, it's not that bad a song. It's just a bad performance. Um, I, I find Wait it till ironic. you hear it at Bob's Eurovision party. Oh, shut up. Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, she, one of the lyrics is she actually says, you take my troubles away. I wish they would take that performance away. Um, <laughs> I gave the song a five. I gave the performance three. Look, they were trying to move, but the fashion, that is a zero. You cannot wear your gym shorts. You're so unforgiving of fashion tonight. Oh, Belgium. Like, oh, if I lived around yeah, all they're this... they're asking for it. Yeah, I'd be depressed too <laughs> if I lived in this beige Belgium gym short world. 2005, our final entry for this evening for reviewing, and it is Nuno Resende with La, Le Grand Soir, The Big Night, Woo -woo! and it did not qualify. Uh. So this one is a song about the day a social revolution will come. Woo! Well, I like that. That's a nice change. Oh, I'm all for it. Don't think yeah. this will be the anthem for it, but I'm Yeah, totally I don't think this is... Yeah, nobody is going to, like, start a rev revolution and start guillotining the rich uh, to yeah. this song. Um, because of because Nuno warbled at them from the stage. He looks like a Vegas magician. Can I just put that out there ahead of time? Like, I feel like I've been meaner <laughs> in this episode than I ever have before, but he looks like a Vegas magician. This jacket is made from curtains. I thought that was bad enough. Then I looked down and realized his pants are made from the exact same fabric as the jacket. <laughs> would you be would you be surprised to learn that he went on to play the role of Aladdin in Aladdin the musical? Uh I think it's the hair. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> that but, both doesn't fit at all and completely makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 The other thing that I, I found was most curious that I found out. So this is, he competed in 2005. Do you know what he was doing in 2013? Working as a magician in Las Vegas. <laughs> that was 2012. Oh, in sorry. What was he doing in 2013? <laughs> in 2013. Okay. He auditioned and participated in The Voice in France, but as a contestant. Right. Not as a judge or a host, as a contestant. How, how, how do you go from performing at the biggest song contest in the world, performing at Eurovision, to eight years later going into a singing contest? And you know what's worse? He didn't win. He came oh, wow. Did he... third. Oh, that's he not terrible. Third. I mean, that's oh. better than coming fourth, isn't it? 
Well, what did he come? Well, he didn't even qualify in 2005. No, he didn't even qualify. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to step up. Could you do that? Could you do that? If, if No, if you were a singer, if you made it to Eurovision, could you then eight years later go on The Voice as a contestant? Like, would you, would you be know. like, oh. You'd have to swallow your pride, wouldn't you? That's, that's, a, that's, yeah. Like, yeah. that's. It's, uh, Look, let's give him a call, see how he's feeling. Let's call yeah. him up. It's kind Nuno, of... let us know. <laughs> how was it? Was it humiliating? So, Nuno, thanks for joining us. Are you humiliated by your decisions in life? <laughs> I don't think that's going to go over well. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, that I like, there's, there's anything wrong with, with going on The Voice. I'm just saying, like, to go from performing at Eurovision At to... Eurovision, yes, I get it. I feel it. Yeah, no, I think... That's got it is an, it's an interesting path you don't see many people take. <laughs> well, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like I've ended this with a with a with a bummer. I feel like I've just broken everyone's spirits. It is a dull song, but he's got a nice voice, which is obviously why he ended up on the Voice. So I've given the song a four, performance a three, fashion a two for a total of nine. Look again. Actually, I, I, yeah, I don't mind the, the song. I actually gave the song a five. Wow, what was I thinking? Um, I gave the performance a four. He tried to put some fash, um, passion into it. Um, I gave the fashion a two. Beautiful for a total of 11. And that is every song for this week, 1987 through to 2005. Liz, do you want to know what our favorite song of the week was? <gasps> oh, yes. Is it Meatloaf? It's not Meatloaf. It was the very first entry we covered, Soldiers of Love by Liliane hey! St-Pierre. With guitar a total guns. of 37. Guitar guns will always win uh, us uh, over. Uh, we'll put that up on our Instagram and on our Facebook, and you can tell us exactly how you feel about our decisions. What was your favorite? Don't worry, everyone. Next Tuesday, we will be back with the last few no, songs. What about Friday? You're forgetting Friday. Oh, no, this is Friday. This is Friday's episode. <laughs> I've had a very long week. Let me try that again, shall I? We will be back on Tuesday, Tuesday, Liz, with the final uh, part of our Belgium episode, 2006 through to 2019. Songs get a little bit poppier from here, and there's some interesting numbers. Now, Liz, do you have oh, a yeah. comment of the week for us? I do have a comment of the week. Uh, comment of the week, we went back to the year 2000 with... Uh, do you say it Natalia? Natalia? Na Natalie. Natalie. Natalie? Okay. Natalie yeah. uh, with the will to live. I can't, <laughs> say it in French. Say it in French. Envy de vir. Beautiful. Sexy. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we went to have a look. Um, uh, love life one year ago was quite harsh. Uh, don't like the clothing. It looks like a cheap wedding outfit um <laughs> complexa cassette carota uh one month ago simply commented with ow <laughs> my ears <laughs> um ab one year ago was was quite harsh with it must be comedy her moves her voice the board dances oh my god <laughs> but the comment of the week, uh, this goes to... Now, this is actually a two-part uh, comment. So the comment of the week does not actually go to the original comment. It actually comes uh, to the follow-up comment. Right, the reply, the response. To the, to the reply, which I, I felt was deserved because uh, Arno G, eight years ago, was eight years ago, <sighs> it's always good to have a little flashback into who we were as a, as a human <laughs> race. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, had just won Eurovision. Lorraine uh, was just a glimmer in my eye. Continue. Sorry. Arno G, eight years ago. Because obviously, you know, people go on, people put all their comments. It's, and this is what's great about Eurovision. You get comments in Italian and Russian and French and English. Arno G, however, was having none of it. Who, respond, who actually went out of his way to actually type the comment. Why all these strange language comments? Question mark. Just comment in English or in French or Dutch because it's from 
Belgium. <laughs> yeah. Said Anna G. Right. Lord, Lord of the internet. So, Brecken Mayer, six years later, after the original comment was made, right. looked at Arno G's comment and simply said, fuck you. How about that? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> so, Brecken Mayer, you, sir, comment of the week. That might be my favorite comment of the week that we've ever had. Well done, Brecken Mayer, <laughs> for nailing Thank you, Brecken it. Brecken Mayer, for standing up for truth and justice. If that's not the spirit of Eurovision, what is? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah. That's us coming together. That's right. Grab your towels. <laughs> Thank you again <laughs> for listening to us. You can follow us on Instagram at Doospoir Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at Doospoir Podcast. Don't follow us on Twitter. We're not on Twitter. Um, I would get us banned. It would Look, I know my French is bad, but I wasn't actually upset by any of the comments about my French. I just want to clarify. <laughs> Apparently the joke was lost somewhere along the way. I really do love hearing from all of you. You can pay me out however you want. You ups you you upset people, Jack. I did. I didn't mean people. to. I I'm really sorry, you Alexander. I them. love you. I love you all so much. You make my you make my day worth worth living. Well, that was dark. Very Belgian of me. <laughs> I do agree with him though. Your uh, your your accents are shit. <laughs> well, shut up. <laughs> hey, Liz. <laughs> fuck you. How about uh that? <laughs> We will see you on Tuesday for the final installment of Belgium. Um, we love you. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye, Liz. Question mark. <laughs>